Well, today I want to talk about fly lines because I think one of the most important purchases you're going to make is the fly line itself. Rods are one thing, but the line is the most important thing you're going to choose. What is it you want to do? You want to trout fish? Most people that trout fish like double tapers. What I suggest if you use a double taper, cut off one end about three feet back from the front taper because when you throw bobbers and sinkers and all that stuff there, that short front taper will kick that stuff over. And then if you want to use dry flies, you turn the line around on the reel and go the other way. That's just a good tip and it works really well. Uh, we have all kinds of lines. You got nymph lines. You got expert distance lines. You got still water lines. You got sinking lines. There's all tarpon lines, bonefish lines. There's so many lines to choose from. Uh, there's so many different lines. Uh, saltwater lines. What is a saltwater line? Think about it. It's the uh, it, when it's, it, a fly line is in extreme heat, such as in the Bahamas or wherever you might be, where it's real hot. Uh, they have to make the cores stiff and the coating stiff because when it gets in that heat, it softens up enough where you can cast them. So they're using braided monofilament core as opposed to a multi-filament core, which is a more of a, a, a Dacron or nylon, whatever. <coughs> uh, a softer core in cold weather or in just almost any fish, fishing situation. I would not take a freshwater line to saltwater because I've had that experience. I used to guide on saltwater and I can tell you that that's not a line of choice. You want to have a saltwater line when you do saltwater. What slows a fly line down is uh, the running line behind it because that drags on the guides and it slows it down. So what saltwater lines got, they're made out of braided monofilament and when you, when you put the plasticizers over the top of that braided monofilament, it gets like a bumpy surface. So they act like ball bearings. There's less surface of the plasticizers running on, on the, uh, the guides. They suit really well and they are very durable. That's a very strong line. Um, again, it's, it's a line for tropical situations. Uh, but again, you can use them in fresh water if it's warm out. And uh, we used to use them in Lake Michigan in November when before we had all these new fancy lines, we used bonefish lines that were very stiff, but they casted really well. And we're talking about we'd, we would have to straighten those lines out because they were so stiff but we caught a lot of fish with them so when the intermediate come out just a plain intermediate came out that was a line of choice for us for doing that type of fishing so if you've done that kind of fishing uh, if you're doing that kind of fishing i would suggest strongly that you consider a, a, a bonefish line or a tarpon line for saltwater fishing now there are now they're making lines uh, these these lines with the braided mount of filament are a, a line that are intended for boat fishing, not wade fishing. You cannot take an, a braided mount of filament core and wade with it because it's going to sink on you. So now they make what they call just a plain saltwater line that does float. It's got multi-filament nylon in it. So getting back to to freshwater, um, there's a lot of different lines you can use. One of one of the favorite lines I use is a intermediate line. And the reason for that is if it's a windy situation, let's say if you're float tubing or in a boat or whatever, and it's a windy situation, the uh, uh, a floating line will be picked up by the waves and dropped back, and, and it'll continue doing that. And all you do when you're stripping is pulling the slack out of the line. An intermediate line goes subsurface, goes below the surface, so that when you're stripping it, it never gets picked up by the waves, and it's constantly moving that fly. So it's a good, great line. An intermediate is a great choice. Uh, if I'm going to do some serious casting, I'll go to a distance taper, and a distance taper means it has a long, long rear taper. Uh, if you think about it in terms of a ramp, if you're going to go off of a, with a motorcycle, it's kind of a, a different analogy. But if you're going to think about coming off of a ramp, you want that ramp to be long and smooth. That's what a distance taper has, that long rear taper. <sighs> about a 75-foot head, 70-foot head, somewhere in that range. So when you're, it, it does several things. That long, that long rear taper does things you can mend in long distances. You can roll cast long distance, and you can also cast long distance. The line's 105 feet. It's not hard at all to hit the reel at 105 with a distance line. Whoever, I mean, I'm sure other manufacturers make them. Uh, bass bug tapers, uh, shorter front tapers. And uh, another thing, when I used to guide a lot for uh, smallmouth bass. Uh, people would come with tapered leaders and roll, they won't roll the fly over, the poppers over. So what we do is we run 20 pound test, 15, 20 pound test for the leader, uh, not tapered. 
and uh, it maintains that, that energy and kicks that popper over. Works perfect. Don't buy tapered leaders for bass bugging. It's just a waste of money and it's, a, it's inefficient. You have nymph tapers. Nymph taper is a line that's made uh, with a short front taper to allow you to throw over strike indicators and sinkers and weighted flies and things of that nature. That again has a long front has a long front taper or a long taper. I think that line runs in that uh, see 20 yeah about 65 feet that nymph taper. So it does roll cast nice. It rolls over big stuff, big heavy clunky stuff. That's a good choice. Uh, Uniform sink. What uniform sink means is that when the line is sinking, what you don't want to have in a sinking line is you don't want to have a belly in that sinking line. You want to have a line that's straight to the fly like this. So this being the fly, you want it to be straight. And a uniform sink means it's heavier on the on the business end than it is throughout the rest of it. That makes it sink. It probe. It. I call it probing. It makes the line probe a little bit, but nicer. That's that's a good choice. Uniform sink, whoever makes it, I know a uh, company I'm with does make it, but I'm sure other companies do make that. <clears throat> so what, what I didn't say before about uniform sink was, is that it comes in about six different ra uh, sink rates. This happens to be, a, right, this uniform sink uh, I, or one, is a uh, intermediate, as we discussed before with the uh, still water line. So that's an intermediate. This one here is a number five. The next line is the number five, faster sink rate, much faster. Inches per second. Now that can, can be kind of confusing because, well, if I, if I wait four seconds, it's so, so deep. If you're pulling against current, it's going to plane back up again. So you got to think about when you throw a sinking line out, you got to throw some slack into that to get that line to sink down in there and feed it into the run. So think about that when you throw a sinking line. It, if it says it'll sink five inches a second, that's true if it's in still water, but if it's in moving water and you're pulling again, it's, it's tight to the rod, it's going to plane back up again. So think about that. Make your cast, stack men some, some slack into it, get up in front of where you think that uh, the fish is holding, stack some, uh, some line into it, and let it sink. And once it starts to straighten out, she's going to be right down along that bottom swinging nice and smooth like that there. A lot of people don't don't use sinking lines because they think they're so hard to cast. Actually, they're one of the easiest lines to cast. All you got to do is, if you put a nail knot at the end of the rear taper and you strip that back, the nail knot hits your hand, roll it out, pick it up, and throw it. That's all there's to that. But people make such a big deal out of all that sinking line stuff. It's a great line. A lot of people miss the boat on it. It's a line of choice for me.